to access the system menu, you want to go ahead and right click on the screen and go to menu. On the left hand side, we want to choose system. And here we're going to have five options here, basic preview time, user and security. Under basic, we're going to have your device name information, your device ID, language, your auto logout. So how many minutes you want it to, to go before it actually locks itself, the unit and your instant playback time. Mouse pointer speed options. Enable password protection is probably one of the most common um, features here that is used. Um, if this unit is in a secure location and you don't want to have to log in every time you access it, you can disable this option. That will allow you to not have to put a password in when you access the unit. Enable startup wizard. When this is checked, anytime the unit reboots, the startup wizard will show up and uh, ask you to go through the steps there. Next on the left, we'll have the preview option, and this is pertaining to the video monitor you have connected to the DVR. Starting from the top here, we have video output. This unit only has one HDMI and one VGA, so they will mirror each other. If you do have units that have more than one HDMI output, here you'll be able to select that option. Below there is the resolution for that video output. Right now we have 1920 by 1080, and then the actual grid you want on that video output. It is set to a two by two grid, which is four windows. Over on the right, we have the max alarm trigger live view window. This is the option here. When you have a event trigger, you can actually have one, four or nine windows pop up during that event trigger. Enable sequence obviously is if you're viewing a single screen or a two by two grid, when you enable sequence, it will rotate through the cameras and the sequence interval is the number of seconds it takes until it changes to the next camera. Down below here we have the live view setup and this is where you will choose what cameras you want and what grid types. So if you notice here we have one, two, three, four in this grid of four. If I wanted to swap two and one on the live view screen, I would hit the trash can here, hit the trash can here on two, select number one and I would select camera two here select number two and I'll select camera one and that will put camera one in the two slot, camera two in the one slot. You wanna make sure to hit apply there when you make those changes. Across the top you have your different grid types and you can also adjust any one of those grid types accordingly. On the far right hand side you have your enable preview for all and your disable preview for all. This option here will actually clear all, if you hit the disable, it will clear all the cameras out and if you hit the enable, it will put them in sequential order. Moving on to the time option on the left hand side, you're gonna have your time zone, date format, time format, and system time. This is all self-explanatory here. Make sure you set those accordingly. If you're using an NTP server address, make sure to input the proper address, port number, and the desired update interval. Across the top we do have daylight savings time. You want to go ahead and enable that if you do recognize daylight savings time in your area. Time sync. When this is checked the cameras will sync with the DVR time. Under holiday you can actually create holidays in the system that you can use for the recording schedule. Moving on to user. You have the admin account which cannot be deleted and then you have a default account that is set as a reserved user. The admin is the only account that can create and delete users. So we're going to go ahead and create a sample user here. I'm going to name this one test. And these options here are kind of like preset, um, but you, you can still change the permissions accordingly higher, however you would like. For the password I'm going to do one two, three, four, Q, W, E, R, exclamation point. I'm going to retype that. You can also choose to have that user have an unlock pattern. You can just enable and disable that here and also set that pattern. Down below you have the basic permissions option. You can either grant or restrict access to certain features of the box. A little bit lower you actually have your camera permissions. This is where you can choose and restrict access to certain cameras in live view, PTZ control, playback, etc. 
can set those accordingly, hit OK, and you have your new user that is added. If you want to remove a user or edit, you hit the edit option. It's going to ask for the DVR password, which is the admin password. And then you can make changes to that user. If you just want to remove that user, you can hit the delete option and yes, but keep in mind you have to be logged in as the admin in order to add or remove users. Moving on to the security tab, you have your IP address filtering. And this is where you can create a blacklist or a whitelist for specific IP addresses that you want to connect or not connect to the box. We have your OnViv Auth, which is enabling authentication for OnViv. If you're going to be connecting to this box via OnViv, you have your ARP protection, which is used to associate an IP address to a hardware MAC address. This is kind of just an extra layer of security as well. And lastly, you have your watermark option, which encrypts custom information and videos to prevent unauthorized alteration. So you can enable that watermark on specific cameras and put the content there. And that concludes the system configuration of the Alibi Vigilant recorders on the local interface.